this project. Um, there were a couple different samples that I had to go go about uh, collecting and also cleaning because it was a part of the, the job process. Uh, originally, this brownstone had a lot of atmospheric carbon deposits located on uh, most of the surface. And uh, so I taken it back to the lab and, and cleaned it, started working on some of this uh, to be able to begin formulating color simulations for the historic brownstone uh, patches that we had formulated with lithomex and, and iron oxide pigments. Um, as you can see, there are some subtleties to a lot of this different brownstone work where in certain instances, we would have to use different types of uh, silicate stains, which still allow the brownstone, it being a sandstone, and breathing, uh, the silicate stains allow that to still happen, and also don't impede vapor permeability, which if you were to use a latex paint or other type of stain, uh, other than it not bonding properly, it would cause deterioration, which is exactly why we were called on for this project, which is to fix the building in some type of historic, accurately uh, correct manner. Um, here you can probably see some of the stains over top of this stone. This is a lithomic stone kind of blended in and we would try to we would slowly blend things together if there wasn't an exact match because stone being a natural material uh, it does have certain variations and subtleties that can be that cannot always be done even with a palette of different uh, brownstone patching materials and the stain kind of helps blend and feather those together. We had done some testing and we figured that we would use a natural hydraulic lime, uh, NHL 3.5 grade, considering the type of stone that it, that it is, and it would accommodate this kind of movement. So we had come in and we, had, we came up with a, with a black mortar joint uh, that was definitely original. There may be areas over on the building where we can see where some of the pigments have leached out. Here you can see the original mortar joint that was black, the same type of bevel, and we wanted to replace that in kind with with the um, custom mortar mix. We had also had gone back over the material with potassium silicate based stain uh, over to make it make it more brilliant, uh, so that way we didn't exceed maximum pigment loadings that are acceptable. Uh, that is clearly done to begin with with um, <laughs> mineral pigments that may have, nobody would use today in modern conservation practices because of certain problems that can arise, such as carbon black. Uh, we had used all mineral pigments, synthetic iron oxides, in our mortar formulation just because of their stability. Um, a lot of it was pretty straightforward. The other thing is we went with a fine textured sand uh, in the mortar mix for two purposes. The sand was is really important to get that proper beveled texture tooling that you can't get with a coarse aggregate. Um, uh, however, again, things were properly formulated so we wouldn't run into any shrinkage cracks or, or problems. And, and that being said, there were also a large amount of fines in the original mortar, which in certain areas you can see that's where they cracked because of whether it be shrinkage and slowly de slow deterioration. A lot of the original fines in the mortar mix were actually from the excess pigment that was used to get that brilliant black, so we were able to compensate for that by using uh, a slightly higher sand ratio to get a more complete binder uh, back into the building, which again is historically appropriate.